So I'm starting off with a simple, clean white tablecloth. So the hubby got me some fresh flowers today and I'm using a low bouquet so we don't want it too tall because we don't want it to compete with the cake stand. I think two is nice so I'm going to use two but you certainly don't have to use two. You can use one. So instead of table mats I'm going to use these plates so they almost function like chargers. So for the purposes of filming, I'm putting the chairs close together, uh, but obviously normally I would separate them. So they're much smaller than your typical dinner plates, but they are larger than sauces. I bought these little teaspoons about a few weeks ago these are smaller than the typical American teaspoons. Uh, I remember the last time I had my tea party, everybody complained that my teaspoons were too large. However, in the US, everything is bigger. But anyway, I found these little cute ones and I hope they will work. Don't forget your clean white napkins. And you can put them under your cutlery if you want or on the side or you can put them on top of the plate like I'm choosing to do here because it just makes it easy for the person to just grab it, put it on their lap uh, as soon as they sit down instead of having to lift their cutlery first. So this tea set was actually the excuse for this tea party. So we get to use it. Like my grandmother always says, use your stuff. So it's obviously a lot different from your typical teacup and saucer. So I'm not gonna have, you know, a little saucer to put the spoon. So I'm just gonna put it next to it. Typically, if I had a saucer, cup and saucer, I would have put the spoon right here on the saucer. And I could do that here, but I'm just going to instead just put it on the side. What do you think? Should I do that? or make it obvious. Maybe I will make it obvious and put it here. Since it's such a teeny little spoon. So then after thinking about it, I decided I was gonna put it this way. So it's close enough to the cup, but having it like this just kind of threw me off. So we'll just put it right here. <laughs> Depending on what kind of tea you have set out, you might need cream and sugar and in the past I've made sugar cubes and you can check uh, a video which I will link to see how I make sugar cubes and you can also check my blog but today the teas will be using uh, the blooming flowers will not require cream so I won't be using this and instead of this big bowl for sugar cubes I'm going to use granulated sugar although to be honest most of us will probably choose to use honey so honey is a lot better than sugar, but you want people to have options. So I will put sugar on the table as well. So it's always nice when you can have, uh, you know, smaller servings on the table that look personalized, but also look a lot more elegant instead of the big bottle of honey or the big jar of sugar that you put small containers on the table. And, um, so I'm using these actually small ramekins. Don't forget your lemon for the table also. Just gonna slice them. Take out the seeds if you can. If you're using loose tea, don't forget your tea strainer. So instead of your traditional teapots, I am using these. This one I bought a couple of years ago. You may have seen it at a haul. It is so beautiful. It's made out of porcelain and heat safe glass. And then this second teapot, I just washed it so it looks a little cloudy also has an insert for the loose tea and this was from tea bloom this was my birthday gift or one of my birthday gifts from kenton so it also has the insert the lid 
So it also has a stand. You insert a tea light into it, light it, and this grid goes on top so that the tea can stay warm or stay hot. When it comes to tea, you can use tea out of a tea bag, which is what I do every day. This English breakfast decaffeinated. Kenton likes this Irish breakfast tea and he also drinks coffee, but today we are feeling special. So instead, we're gonna use loose tea. But let me show you my tea box. So I think I will also take out some of these black currant ama tea, because this actually tastes quite sweet. It tastes like juice more than it even tastes like tea. So I think I'll use these or give Mariam the option of using this. So, but today's special is going to be these tea from Flowering Teas, Tea Flowers. You get a lot of different varieties. This has 12 varieties in each can. So 250 cups, it says. Wow. 12 unique flowers. Jasmine, Golden Oasis, Floral, Passion, Sunset, Love, Fairy Lily. Ooh, these names sound so good. Nice. So yeah, this one I opened, but I haven't tasted it yet. I just wanted to see what the tea bags look like. So besides the tea, make sure you give uh, everyone an opportunity to drink something else if they want. So I have my son helping me here to shred the chicken and this is just boiled chicken. You could bake it or you can just boil chicken breast and then uh, season it. Add your mayo, add your seasoning, add some grapes if you want. For the corned beef sandwiches, it may look like this. This is the brand I'm using. It is halal. Um, it is also pretty natural corned beef. So we got our boiled eggs for our egg salad sandwich. And the great thing is when you're having, you're making different sandwiches, you don't have to make a ton because you have a lot of variety. So you're just making a little bit of a lot of different things. So for this tea party, I'm going to skip your typical or traditional cucumber sandwiches, simple cucumber and dill sandwiches, since the kids made it clear to me last year or the year before that they did not like that. So we have our chicken salad with some grapes in there, and this is egg salad, and this is some corned beef. Let's start off with the egg sandwiches. For contrast, I think I'm gonna use this brown bread. And you can use whatever bread you have available or that you like, but I think I like the contrast of the dark brown bread and the egg salad. You can butter the bread first. So this egg salad has jerk in, in it, you know, which are the tiny little pickles. And you want to put your filling mostly in the center because you're going to cut off the crusts. You can use a serrated knife, but I find that just a straight edge knife is just as good. and gives me a cleaner cut because you want the edges to be very sharp. That's what makes it look professional. So I'm not pressing down too hard, but just enough pressure. All right, so now we're gonna cut these in, this looks like it would make four. You could cut it this way lengthwise, but that would be too clumsy, so I think I want to do it this way. Okay. Now you can make these in advance and put them in the refrigerator with a damp paper napkin on top so that they don't dry out. Place them standing up. That way you can see the filling. Isn't that already pretty? So as you can see, I made about nine mini little sandwiches with just six slices of bread. 
The next sandwich I'm gonna make is our chicken salad sandwich. I'm gonna use this whole grain white bread. Now, if you don't have real butter, you can certainly use margarine, but if you are gonna use butter, don't forget to bring your butter to room temperature. What you see, the little dark uh, color that you see is actually grapes, because grapes gives it a nice texture. You can also use cranberries if you like, or you could even use, I imagine you could use some raisins. Um, it also has a little bit of jerkins or little pickles in there, just a little. You can also add celery, but Mariam does not like celery, so I did not. And cut off the crust again. I decided to pick up a bread knife this time because of the texture of the chicken. It's got the grapes and the chicken visible. I'm gonna put it on its side. So the whole key to any tea party, even if it's not English inspired, is to make the presentation very attractive. We eat with our eyes, right? If the food doesn't look attractive, we're not gonna eat it. It could be the most expensive or fanciest food and we're just not inspired to eat it. Whereas you can take the simplest of food and make it attractive and all of a sudden you want to eat it. And then I'm going to add a few leaves. Okay, now that looks like a lot, doesn't it? Will we have room for our avocado? Another idea I have actually is to put the avocado on top. Yes, that sounds genius. <laughs> so that's what we'll do. We'll cover the sandwich and then just add the slices. So your avocado doesn't darken, we're going to put some lime or lemon juice on it. Okay, so I'm going to add the avocado to the top instead of trying to squish it into each sandwich. So, do you see that? Isn't that pretty? And that way you pick up the sandwich like this. You see that? Finally, time to assemble the corned beef sandwiches. Here's your corned beef. So once I get dressed, then I'm going to come down and assemble everything that has been, uh, that we've made. So especially the dessert, I have a number of different desserts which Kenton uh, bought for me. So I did not make the dessert and they're so pretty. And so we'll put that all together as soon as I get dressed. Welcome back. I am dressed and ready to serve you. So I just want to tell you a few things about the stand. The stand is very important, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have a stand for your tea party. So I'm going to use this one, which has three layers, very traditional in a sense. Usually you can find some stands that come with plates. They're actually china plates in between, but this one is not. I was going to use this one. It has two layers. Um, it reminded me of a garden, so I might use it outside in the garden one of these days. And uh, part of the challenge was it's actually a plate stand, right? It's actually a plate stand that I got from my grandmother, um, but I could not find the right plates to fit in here. And again, it only has two layers and I need three layers, dessert, uh, scones or scones and the sandwiches. So that's why I'm choosing to use this one. I also have this smaller one, which is kind of a copper theme. I think I will keep this for the fall. So just to give you an idea, and if you don't have one of these stands, like I said, what you can do is put a plate, put a cup or a teacup, put another plate on top of that, basically stack or layer plates in between uh, cups and you can get the same effect. 
So I'm gonna start at the bottom tier and I'm gonna put some green here just for garnish and as a way to uh, separate the sandwiches. That's optional. You don't have to do that, but I think it would be nice. What you can do also is if you don't wanna clump each type of sandwich together, you can put, if you had like say three or four people, you could put you know one of each sandwich on each side, that way everybody would just take what was directly in front of them. That's one way. All right, so let's get our sandwiches on there. Have our egg sandwiches that I took out. Make sure your hands are clean. And I'm choosing again to put the same type of sandwiches in one section. In my last uh, tea time video, I showed you making clotted cream from scratch. Well, we managed to find this English double cream in the store, in a specialty store, so I didn't have to make it this time. And this is called Devon Cream, Devon Cream Company. Ooh, just look how rich and luscious that is. It's actually really simple in terms of to make. It's tedious, but simple to make. But if you don't know what you're doing, you know, I can see how it might be a challenge, but it's so beautiful and so rich. And over here I have some homemade scones that my son Kareem made. They don't look like the traditional English scones, but he did his best and really appreciate it. They look good and they really actually taste good. So we're gonna put that right next to our jam and cream. So for the top layer, I'm gonna go ahead and put a number of dessert. For example, this came from the fresh market. Like I said, I did not bake these and uh, it's going to be pretty and tasty. And variety is the key. So you want small dainty desserts. Have some mini cheesecakes, some lemon cakes, a little bit of chocolate, some raspberry. As much as you can hold on there without it looking too crowded. I think that's enough. If at all possible, make room for some fresh strawberries. I got some strawberries from the market and uh, it just creates a nice fresh contrast to your stand. Make sure you wash them and dry them off. And I'm just gonna add that to any little spaces I have where there is the dessert. It just adds a nice fresh contrast and gives everybody an alternative. You could also put them right next to your in between your sandwiches if you want. Kenton also loves fresh figs, and I think figs just add a bit of luxury to any display. Have you ever seen a beautiful uh, cheese platter? It looks amazing with some fresh figs. All you have to do is wash them and cut them in half, and it just makes everything look that much more beautiful. Drizzle it with a little bit of honey if you wanna be really indulgent, but we're not doing that here today. Today, I'm just gonna cut them in half and put them in the stand. So nice and sweet and a little bit squishy. Unlike the dried ones you find in the regular supermarket. So I washed my figs. Let's go ahead and cut it in two. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, so pretty. So I'm just gonna put that right here, right next to the strawberries. And I might put some up here with the dessert because it is technically dessert, nature's dessert. This is the green tea with rose flower. I've already cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. <laughs> One blooming flower in there. And I'm gonna do that with the second see-through uh, pot but without the centerpiece, without the sieve part. Okay, here we 
go. Make sure it's accessible for everyone. I think that looks divine. So we're done and now let's get everybody to the table. We will have joining us my husband Kenton, Spencer, Mariam, Kareem will be behind the camera and Khalid just like we had two years ago. Oh, So welcome to my tea party and as your hostess I'm supposed to show you around and serve your tea but I think if it's close to you I don't mind if you serve yourself. So we have three different types of tea. The floral teas, one, two, and here we have the black currant tea specifically for Mariam should she not like the others. Uh, we also have our dessert our scones with the jam and the clotted cream and our savory sandwiches. So traditionally you start at the bottom and you make your way up. Okay and then we also have honey and sugar and lemon and uh, if you want something else to drink we also have some refreshments over there. Alright so go ahead let's get started. Should I go ahead and serve you this tea Maria? So Since you're closest to make me. Make sure you put the napkins on your lap. Okay, yes, you are right. Let's put our napkins on our lap. <laughs> so, let me go ahead and serve you. So, Miriam, I'm going to use the strainer first, which is interesting. And actually, it doesn't hold that much. No, it's just like a, it's an Asian inspired, just simple. Okay. So you are first. So the key is the longer you seep the uh, tea, the darker the color it is. So there you go. I'm just really curious to see what it tastes like. <laughs> Super. Good. As you folks see, I do this a lot. Really? Okay, so what you know what's cool and instantly that I recognize mm -hmm. is that because of the double walled glass, yeah. you really don't feel any of the heat. That's Go ahead right. and pick it up, Khalid. Now, did you want any sugar or are you just doing it straight? Um, you know what? I'm going to drink it straight and see what it tastes Taste like it. and then see if I need, I'll add a little bit of honey. Now, be careful, it's a little hot. You don't care? It doesn't, there's no flavor? Yeah. I can already smell mine. You I think I can though. smell like. Um, I don't know if this is more like chrysanthemum in this one. It's, diff well, it's different. It's got different um, flowers and herbs in it. So you've got chrysanthemum, you have rose. Oh, you know what? This is definitely the rose. Yeah, that one's rose. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely rose. Mm -hmm. Is that what you had, Khalid? No, he has. This one. Oh, okay. But again, like I said, the, the, yeah, the longer it's seed, the darker. The richer yeah, the flavor is going to be. That one's called Romeo and Juliet. Okay, let me taste so it. So it probably has a little bit of rose in it. Do you want to taste mine? Try to see. You'll see what I mean. Oh. Right. Right? It's a stronger rose. Right? It's strongest. <laughs> Mariam, why are you sitting there so stiff? <laughs> Alright, Mariam, can I give you? Can I get <laughs> you? Marketing team. I'll get you some. Um, <laughs> this is the corned beef, which I think you will approve. Which one do you have for? The corned beef, right. And then I'm going to get you one of the chicken salad. Okay. But I'll take off the avocado. Is there raisins in it? No, there's no raisins in it. There's no raisins in there. You sure you don't want the avocado? That's just half a grape. Why is there a grape? It's great. What do you mean? There's half a grape in there. Didn't I put grapes in it the last time? <laughs> Did I, I put grapes in it the last time, Khalid? What do you remember? So anyway, Khalid, does it taste okay? 
fine. Oh my gosh, oh my god, here we go again. Yeah, I know it's cold. English sandwiches generally are cold. Even American sandwiches are cold. When you go to school, aren't your sandwiches cold? I cook, I bring my own lunch. No, seriously, when you, when you get a ham and cheese sandwich, isn't that cold? No. Yes, it is. No. Cheese is warm. Actually, this tea grows on me. Yeah, it's much better. With, right, with, with the, the honey. honey and a little bit of lemon, but yeah. Yeah, this is a chicken sandwich with avocado. I shouldn't reach over. But. I and I am going to have an egg sandwich also. Cream made it? Mm-hmm. Cream oh. made the egg sandwich. Excellent job, Cream. I put them together, but he actually made it. <laughs> Would you like the clotted cream? Yeah. No, try it. Destroy my stomach. No, it won't. Had it before. But also the name. <laughs> God. It's clotch. Clotted cream is bad. It's really delicious. No, I saw how you made it last time. No, no but this, this we, I didn't make it this time. No, I bought but it. But I know how it's made. So what does that mean? <laughs> Girl. Oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> yep. Do I raise my pinky? No, no pinky yes, raising me. Oh, is that what that means? Oh, does that mean that? Yeah. Who told you that? Someone with syphilis? No, one the tea and get people. Oh, really? They said that? If you lift it up, it means you have syphilis? Mm -hmm. What if you do this? Is that double barrel pink eye? Yeah, something else. Mm, I can smear, right? It's up to you. Well, oh, Green, you did a good job. You need the, uh, the scones too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. Mariam, have you tried a fresh fig? Why don't you? I can't see it. Yeah, I'll pass one to you. Seriously, I think you'll like it. Let's see Mariam eat a fresh fig. You said this. Daddy yeah. eats that all the time. I, mean, I, I love fresh figs. Daddy eats that all the time. Yeah, okay. See? <laughs> we gotta try new things. Right. Honey. Well, I just feel like, why does it taste like there? It's in there. It does not. It's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah, it is. Maybe because I had this. this that might be. Sweet. Yeah, because again, that's, yeah, it's true. Right, if you have concentrated have... sweet, so. Okay, know, my turn to try palate. this fig. And you know what? I'm just going to have it plain. It is an interesting texture if you're not used to it, but. I think it's delicious. It's sweet. You like pigs, Clay? Not really. Not really. Not really. What's like up with my American kids, man? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mariam, here's the black currant tea. Creamer yeah, in the SNL skit for day. Back and forth. What's up? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that was nice. an outfit. Yeah. <laughs> you your bony lips. It's okay. Does it taste better? Yeah, it's sugary. Daddy, what was your favorite sandwich? Or what was the better one? They're all good. Really? I oh, I haven't tried the chicken. Oh, okay, before. yeah. It's good. It's all good. Hey folks, thanks for joining us for Abiba's and Kareem's wonderful uh, tea party. And uh, we really enjoy having you and sharing this with us. So thank you. Remember to click and subscribe and to like if you're interested in some of the things that contributed to making this wonderful tea party. Click uh, on the links below and you can see, especially with the teapots and the, and the blooming teas and so forth. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.